Hi, my name is Björn Rüffer and I would like to tell you what mathematical systems theory is about. It is a theory about systems. And I should probably define that. So, to give you a hand-waving definition of a system, it has essentially three ingredients. The most important ingredient is time. A mathematical system is an object, a mathematical object that depends on time. So here is my mathematical object. Next to time, there are also so-called external variables. External variables are essentially a way for the system to interact with its environment. And external variables can be distinguished into inputs and outputs. That distinction can be, in some cases, arbitrary, but very often it is done. So here we have inputs. often called u of t. So here you already see the time dependence, everything depends on time. And there is outputs. And inputs and outputs can further be distinguished into controllable inputs and uncontrollable inputs. Controllable inputs are, for example, if you think of your car as a dynamical system, you can steer your car, you can accelerate your car, you can decelerate your car, but you may not be able to directly influence the environment of the car where the car is really located, like going uphill or downhill, um, or whether or not you hit a bump in the street, something like that. So these can be external variables, or the wind that affects your car, conditions, external conditions that you cannot influence uncontrolled inputs and controlled inputs. For outputs it's similar. There are outputs that are in some sense observable or measurable. We call them measurable outputs. And there are outputs which can be a subset but don't have to be, which we want to regulate in some sense. For example, the speed of the car we would like to control using some device which you all know as cruise control, the little button behind the steering wheel, at least for fancier cars, that essentially um, if you press it and you drive 100k per hour, then you continue to drive 100 kilometers per hour without doing much more than just steering the car, but you don't have to have the foot on the pedal. Of course, you should have it close to the brake for security reasons. Okay, so these are external variables and we have a time dependence in there. And the third ingredient here is the state. So you can think of it as the internal variables of the system, anything that goes in that goes on in the system. And we often call that X of T. And to distinguish between internal and external var variables, there are essentially three rules, and I would like to explain those with a picture. So, this diagram here has a time axis and it has an axis that I use for inputs, outputs and states. So, here's my input signal. Then I have my state signal. And I may also have an output signal. So there are three basic requirements that we ask to be satisfied. The first is that we can determine the, oh sorry, this should be the state x of t of course, because we already have an input. So the basic requirement for the state is, the first one, that if we fix a particular 
time, and we call it the initial time, but it could be any initial time really, then the knowledge of x at this particular moment in time, just one value of this entire function basically, together with the knowledge of the input signal, should determine at least the future of the state, how that evolves. In some cases it even uh, determines the past. So this is condition one. Condition two is that the future states of the system should not depend on or to put it differently, that the state at, at the current time, at some current x of t, should not depend on inputs that are in the future. Only past inputs are allowed. So the system cannot, cannot see the future, basically. That is causality. That's condition two. And condition three is that we can determine the value of the output at any given time by only the knowledge of the input at that exact moment of time and the state at that very moment of time. These are three conditions and if they are all satisfied we call this mathematical object that is described by these relations a dynamical system or a control system. There's also a theory of dynamical systems and to distinguish the, uh, these objects from, from what is studied there uh, these are often called control systems. And dynamical systems, in some sense, are a subset of control systems. So, now we have systems. What can we do with them? Well, I mentioned cruise control. So, let me draw cruise control into our picture. Cruise control essentially measures the current velocity in your car and feeds that into some fancy little device which does some computations. And the result of those computations are fed back essentially to the gas pedal of your car. And this is a controller, that's what it's called. And cruise control is just there to control the velocity of your car. So you set it to a particular reference velocity that you like, say 100 kilometers per hour, but suddenly you drive up a hill or you drive down a hill or there is strong wind from uh, Coming, coming towards you. So, how is your, your controller going to perform? Or how is your system going to behave? So if you normally would drive with 100 kilometers per hour, but then suddenly there is a slight disturbance that pushes you off the track, so to say, in, in a velocity uh, sense, then are you going to return to this 100 kilometers per hour, at least asymptotically? If so, that is a notion of stability. Basically, small disturbances shouldn't push you off too far and asymptotically you should return to the nominal behavior. That is what stability really is. There's another related term and that is called uh, robustness. A system can be robust or a controller, this one here, can be robust. So if I have designed this controller for a car, which is a Toyota, is it also going to work in a BMW? That's actually a question of robustness. So, basically, I have a model here, and the mathematical model can be very accurate, it can also be very loose, and in some sense, I would often aim for a model that is as abstract as possible, because I can more clearly see the fundamental structure that is really important and not obscured by too many details and also it's easier to model so I would favor a simpler model if I can but of course it's not an accurate description of the reality so the model could be very generic it could actually really ignore the fact what brand the car is and then the question really is of course if I design a controller for this model which is not really reflecting the reality. How well is this going to perform in the real world? And these are questions of robustness and those together with questions of stability are what people in the mathematical systems theory community investigate among other things. So I hope this gives you a very brief introduction to what mathematical systems theory is about. I hope you liked it.
If so, please give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you want to see more, please also tell me that in the comments. And if you subscribe, you will see if I upload any future videos about uh, mathematical systems theory and related questions. I think I might actually do that.